Hey everybody, happy Sunday. <laughs> Good morning, Sunday morning. This is the Alex Manassa, and we're going to talk today about circuit boards and how do you make them. We can, uh, you know, go on about how great circuits are, but half the fun of engineering is making it yourself, right? Half the fun of being a musician is playing your favorite songs yourself. So uh, we're going to talk a look at, uh, we're going to take a look at KiCad. I pronounce it KiCad. Some people say KiCad. I'm sure there's other pronunciations. Um, it is a free PCB software that is open source, which means it's got a little bit of a uh, jank factor to it, but I think you'll find it's quite well worth it. Uh, this is KiCad EDA, Electronics Design Automation Suite. Uh, it's documentations right here. Now this is just their front page, so it's uh, KICAD-PCB.org. You can also just look up KICAD on the internet and you can, you know, find it. It's, it's not, they're not hard to find. All right, so what does it have? It's got schematic capture, which means, schematic capture means that you're just putting the electrical circuit onto a piece of paper in a symbolic fashion. That's it, right? So this is not gonna be the actual physical circuit. You're not doing any physical stuff. You're just saying what connects to what. That's the simple explanation, all right? PCB layout is where you start getting physical, right? That is where you start you know, laying out all the individual pieces of the circuit. So here you see a couple of QFN packages, uh, rounding here, you see a bunch of grounded uh, uh, screw-in lugs. Uh, you see another QFN, another QFN. I couldn't even hack RF1, so this is probably some sort of RF board. This also looks to be a really old version of KiCad. I don't know. It doesn't quite look like that anymore. And you also have a 3D viewer. So this is an actual 3D render of the board I just showed you. So before, that was just a lithography. Lithography means, uh, you know, uh, I think it's... Uh, Actually, that's a, that's a good one. I think litho, lithography, meaning... I think that means like light, writing. Oh no, it's stone, and then to write. So, wh however that has anything to do with anything. The uh, uh, PCB design is just done in 2D planes, different layers. Each layer has a different meaning. Some layers mean the copper that you see exposed. Other layers mean the writing. Other layers mean, you know, where all this black dye is put down. That's a solder mask that's to protect the copper. So only the copper that needs to be soldered to is usually exposed. And the rest of the copper is hidden behind this uh, material that's not too different from, I guess, uh, like nail polish. And you can actually buy this solder mask and, and, and use it uh, in, you know, in, in person. Uh, but it's all these different layers culminate in a circuit board. And you can physically view it if you have 3D models of all the parts that you're using here. So he's got a couple of SMA connectors that are right angle. Uh, you've got a couple of knobs, I guess, for tuning things. And then a lot of different chips, crystals, crystal, crystal. Uh, that's an inductor, inductor, capacitor, capacitor. I can go through and identify all this stuff, right? So, uh, greatscottgadgets.com slash hackrf if you want to find out more information about that. But we're going to get into it. Now, I call this video a buttonology video. We're going to do the buttonology of it, right? So, I've got myself here a new uh, project in KiCad. So, after you download it, you install it. Make sure to install the 3D graphics software as well. It's called FreeCAD. Uh, that'll give you the ability to uh, create your own 3D models. And I might do a separate video on FreeCAD later. Uh, AutoCAD is also a pretty good option, but I got to check out FreeCAD, give it it's a fair shake. Uh, I got to decide on what my 3D view, you know, 3D drawing software of choice is going to be for these tutorials. Open source software is nice because it's all there. No one's going to give you a restriction later down the road, but there's going to be a little bit of a jank factor, it, uh, it being open source and getting support is always a little difficult. But if you're not a paying customer, you're pretty much guaranteed to not get a ton of support anyway. And I'm making this, I'm making these videos for free software. You can pay um, $500 for Altium Workshop. You can pay $5,000 to $10,000 for Altium itself if you want to do circuit boards. I don't, I don't make videos for people with that kind of budget. The people with that kind of budget, you usually already know what they want to do. So. I opened up, I installed KiCad, I installed FreeCAD, I've got, uh, I've created a new project. Um, the way you create a new project is go, you know, launch KiCad and then go to new and then project, pick any place you want. That project is going to create a bunch of different files. One of them is going to be called your pro file. Then there's a KiCad underscore PCB file and a schematic file. So the schematic file is where we're going to have our schematic capture. This is where we're going to make our electrical drawing, right, for what the connections are 
So we're just going to identify connections. Now, what I just did there is to zoom in, you do your middle uh, mouse wheel, zoom in, zoom out. You're going to zoom in to wherever your mouse is pointing to. So notice how, and you're going to zoom out from the same point too. So if I put my mouse over to the left, zoom out, I'm now centered on that. If I take my mouse over to the right, zoom in, I'm now centered on that. And notice how my mouse goes to the center of the screen. So just put your mouse wherever you want to have your new center be, and then just start mouse wheeling it from there, okay? To pan, just click your middle mouse button and then hold it in while you move your mouse around and you'll pan about, okay? So that's how you move your camera. To zoom, let's go ahead and zoom in on just any blank spot of here. Uh, do it until you see about one, two, three, four, five of these sort of squares. See how this kind of forms a bit of a square? It's hard to see, but some of these dots are a little darker than others, and that kind of forms the major uh, grid line. And these little grids between it are the minor grid lines, right? So now let's place a part. Now to place a part, you got to go up to the place toolbar entry, go to symbol, okay? And now, now that you're in the symbol mode, You've got a little uh, pencil on your cursor now. Place that wherever you want to place your symbol. And you're going to be able to move it later anyway, so just put it anywhere in there. Uh, you're going to load a bunch of libraries. So all these libraries are loading up right now. And now you have to go find your symbol. And this can take a long time if you're not familiar with it. Uh, you're going to have to kind of get familiar with it, but a lot of the times the stuff you want is going to be under device. So choose your symbol. All of these are listed as libraries. And then once you get to the library that your part is going to you know, be in, you can expand it by pressing the plus sign here. That expands the tree. This is a tree structure. Uh, and below you have all these different symbols. Now, this device library is for generic symbols for common devices, okay? And that's where you're going to find your, polar, your capacitors, your polarized capacitors, all your different symbols. And you can actually go through with your mouse and, or uh, sorry, your, your arrow key and use your arrow key to, to scroll through this and just see all the different things that are there to offer, right? So you've got all these different parts, but we want a resistor. So what, the schematic we're gonna make is we're just gonna make a resistor, an LED, and then two connectors so we can have power. And we're gonna do two sets of LEDs and uh, resistors. And we're gonna show through hole versus surface mount parts. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go down and scroll all the way down till I start seeing some R's. R for resistor. Okay, so here's a resistor. Now notice this is like a weird can shape. Uh, this is the European version of the resistor. There's also R underscore US for the US version. So just keep that in mind. All the, and there's all these resistor networks as well. These are not something you really have to worry about too much. So eventually you're gonna find R US. Now that took a while to find, right? Now well, let's say that you already knew what the symbol is called. You could just go over to the filter part and just go R underscore U, US and you'll just pop right up. And you can see the different things they have to offer, right? So here's R US. Once you've selected your part, and that means it's highlighted in blue, you're gonna wanna go over to the OK sign, hit OK. Now the resistor is stuck to your cursor and it's waiting for you to place it. So let's go ahead and just place it anywhere you want. I like right here. Now notice the resistor has the symbol itself an R question mark, and then an R US. Go ahead and scroll over top of the part, and that means the red symbol part, and right click. You're gonna see something that says end tool. You can go ahead and end the tool. So we're still in placement mode, so if we were to click someplace else, it'll open up the place box. To get, rid of, to get out of whatever mode you're in, hit the escape key. So get that pencil away. All right, now let's go ahead and put your mouse over top of the resistor and right click. Now you're gonna see all these different options. All of these options have, or a lot of these options have a letter next to it, right? So do you wanna move R question mark? Do you wanna drag it? Do you wanna change the orientation, like rotate it, mirror it X, mirror it Y, reset the default? These different things, these little hotkeys, you can just do without even opening that menu. Now, these types of menus are called context menus. When you hover your mouse over something and right click and you see a bunch of entries pop up like this, that's a context menu. It's a menu that follows the context of whatever you're clicking. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up my context menu. I'm gonna note that dragging it is G, okay? So I'm gonna not, so I'm just gonna put my mouse over top of the resistor just like I did before and I'm gonna hit G. Aha, now I'm dragging it. That's really cool. 
Now, I said that I need two resistors and two LEDs to make this circuit, okay? So I wanna copy this. And the shortcut key for that is, so duplicate is C. Well, let's go ahead and try that. Aha, fully duplicated. And I like to keep things on my major axes to keep things nice and uh, clean, right? So now we've duplicated it. Now, if you double click on the red line here, you'll notice the symbol properties pops up, okay? You can do the same thing. You can uh, uh, just put your mouse over it and then go to properties and edit properties as well and you'll be able to edit the same thing. Now, this is where we find out what that R question mark and the RUS is, right? The R question mark is a placeholder because the way schematics work is that we put a symbol and then a number to enumerate the different parts on the schematic. So if I have two resistors, I'm gonna name one R1 and I'm gonna name another one R2. If you've ever watched the show Bananas in Pajamas, it'll make more sense to you. If you haven't watched that show, well, then your childhood just wasn't as full as mine. Let's go ahead and name these. Reference R1, okay, and the RUS, I am going to use a one kilo ohm resistor, okay? So I'm gonna put one K. We don't have to put the ohm on because we know that resistors are measured in ohms. So I'm just gonna put one K, K for kilo, which is a prefix, I believe it's Greek, for a thousand. There's another way to edit these symbols as well. You don't have to just edit the properties necessarily. You can double click on the letters itself. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because sometimes finding the exact thing you wanna edit can be a little bit difficult, right? So I've double clicked on both of these entries and I've changed them. Now let's see if the change also took effect in the properties themselves. So go over to the symbol, double click on it. Good double click. Reference is R2 values 1K. Very good. All right, that's wonderful. Now let's go ahead and place two LEDs. Now how do you think that you're gonna do that, right? Try doing that right now and Pick a symbol, go ahead and as soon as I get done with the sentence, pause the video, go pick a symbol by placing it, put it on the schematic and then duplicate the symbol and put both of those LEDs right underneath those resistors and make it so that the arrow of the LED is pointing down, okay? Pause the video and give that a shot. All right, you back? Very cool, all right. If you didn't give it a shot, then I guess you get to just watch me do all the work. Feels like college all over again. All right, so let me let me speak while I'm doing this. I went over to place, went over to symbol. Notice you can also hit shift A. Let's try that. Oh, shift A, there we go. Shift A, this little place symbol, uh, symbol <laughs> has highlighted. I'm now in place symbol mode. I'm gonna click somewhere on my schematic, okay? If I want to be lazy, I can just type in LED, light emitting diode, there we go. Let me see what this, ah. Well, I don't know what's going on. I wanted to see in the preview pane what the, uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so the same controls that apply in the schematic also apply in these little preview panes. I just wanna see what this says. Okay, it just says passive. Okay, cool. I was just wondering what it said. Uh, it's an LED, it's got a, a prefix uh, name of D, so it's going to be D1 and D2, and its value just says LED as a placeholder. I'm going to double click on this. You can also highlight it and just hit OK. I'm going to place one here, hover over it, so exit the mode by hitting escape, so I just hit escape, exit the mode, hover over the LED, press C, and then take it over here, and the arrow is pointing down, okay? Now that you've got two LEDs, we're going to have to connect these parts. You can use this wire symbol, says place wire. Now you're in the place wire mode. Notice my, I got a little pencil here. That means I'm about to write. You click on this little circle here. That little circle means that a connection, an electrical connection is open. You haven't connected anything to it. You don't wanna have a schematic that has any open connections, okay? Every connection should be addressed. Now let's go and click on the circle and then drag your cursor down to the LED, just like that, perfect. Perfect, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Click on the circle, drag it down to the LED. Very good, very good. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and give these things power, right? So what we wanna have is we wanna have energy going through this resistor, then through this LED, the LED will light up, and then we need power to return to ground, okay? 
So now we're gonna go ahead and go back up to the place menu because we wanna place something. We wanna place a symbol that says we are connecting to power. And that here is the power port, okay? Click on power port. Now it's gonna ask you to place it somewhere. Go ahead and just use your middle mouse button to pan upwards. Now place it somewhere above the symbol. I'm gonna place it on the major axis here and expand the power uh, library. In this power library, I wanna use a nine volt battery. So just go ahead and hit nine volts, right? Plus nine volts and place it here. And I want another one of the, well, actually we can use this and connect it to both of these uh, resistors. Let me show you. Take your wire tool. Now I'm in place wire mode. Notice I've got a little pencil as my cursor. Grab the circle here, which means there's no connection and then finish the connection by connecting it to the top of R1. Now notice there's a little middle area here too. There's a, there's a middle bit. We're gonna click on the middle of that new green wire, drag it over top of R2, and we can also go up and down with this wire as well. In schematics, most, I think in schematics without exception, all of your lines are gonna be at right angles. They're easier to read. There's gonna be less um, chaos in the drawings. Things are gonna look good. The whole reason you have a schematic is to make your intentions very clear. People are gonna be working on your schematics when they're really tired. They're gonna be working on the schematics and they're not really sure how the schematics actually work because the people who build it are not necessarily the people who designed it. We need to have things be clear. Now we need a ground symbol, okay? So we're gonna to go to power port again Go down below on the major axis here. You see the little major grid line here. And click on a spot. Now we're going to look for power and we're going to find a ground symbol. It's going to be GND. Here we go, GND. Perfect. Grab that. Go ahead and place it down here. Now we don't need to copy it. You could if you wanted to. You could have a ground, you can have a ground underneath each of these LEDs if you really wanted to. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna start with the opposite LED. Okay, so remember before we went straight down? I'm gonna go around to the side because I want to show you how this works. So go down one, go to the right until you're just above the ground, and then click. Okay, now notice you're still drawing. You, when you click, you only get the last corner. So I only did this corner right here. Okay, now starting from that corner, it's like I'm drawing another uh, angle here, from here. I get one more angle and I could just go right to ground. See how that works? Let's go ahead and connect the LED up now. Now we could take this directly down to the ground, but we really shouldn't. We should connect on the closest uh, wire uh, to the part, which is right here. And then you do so and you get a little circle. That circle means that the connection coming in, all of these are bundled together, okay? Hit escape to exit the wire mode. Now double click on the D to assign this as D1. Do the same thing, double click on the other D uh, question mark, make it a D2. Double click on LED, and I want you to name this one red, okay? We're gonna put a red LED there. And I want you to name this one, other one, green. You can also shorten it, just do GRN. But I think we're gonna have plenty of space on this board. Okay, great. Now this is a schematic that is perfectly readable. Now, what we don't know, tiny kitten just walked in. Uh, what we don't know is how the, we're gonna get this nine volts into the circuit. So we're gonna need a connector. I'm gonna place a symbol for a connector. Now, go ahead and take a guess what the library is gonna be called for that symbol. It could be in device, right? That's supposed to be a generic library, but this connector is actually in the connector library. Now, you're gonna see a lot of different connectors like 4P, 2C, 4P, 4C, these different complicated connectors. You don't want that, you don't want that. We want something really simple. It's really nice and simple, okay? So we're actually gonna go all the way down to where it just says con. And it's gonna say con, uh, you know, 01 by 01. So it's kind of like a grid. You have a one by one connector. You can have a one by two connector. So I got one row of two. Let's see, I think there's gonna be a, a rows of, oh no, there's not, okay. Here's like a 15 by four. <laughs> So they're all in the line, right? Okay. Let's choose the uh, one by two. We only need two connections here. Oh my goodness. Oh my, oh he is now. Party crasher. All right, you want pets? You're interrupting my video on KiCad. This is very important. Oh, she is, she wants none of it. Well, you need to behave. Uh, 
Okay, I'll get you as far away from the electronics as possible. Okay, we're gonna choose a male connector because I want two pins coming out of this. Really, you could just solder direct. You could just solder a uh, nine volt directly in. But all this footprint, or sorry, all this uh, part really is is just an external connector. Pan over to the left a little bit and place this wherever you like. And I want you to hover over and exit the mode because you're still in the place mode. Notice the little pencil on your cursor. Hover over the plus nine V, press C. We're gonna go ahead and copy it. Okay, do the same thing with ground. Okay, just, and don't go directly out from this too. I mean, you can just click it right here and have a connect, but it's just not aesthetically very pleasing. You wanna give some space. Space is important for your mind to process information. Uh, you need a little bit of, I mean, you could write a book that fills every white space with words. Like there's almost no, like it's just thick with words. Your brain would not be able to make any sense of it. All right, now we've got a J and we've got this con 01 by, by 02 underscore mail. Let's just name it J1. And we're gonna change that con, that's the value of it. I just wanna name it PWR, that's where power's coming in. Or really, I'm gonna name it um, plus nine V, okay? So that's plus nine volt power. All right, so if you were trying to just make a schematic, that would be it. But we wanna make a circuit board, right? Well, to make a circuit board from a schematic, you need to give every one of these symbols a footprint. All right, now I've already pre-selected some parts that we're gonna use. Let's see, if I come over here. All right, so I've chosen this as the, as the, through, as the uh, surface mount resistor. Uh, it is a 0201 or that's in met, uh, oh, that was really tiny. That's a teeny tiny, okay, that's a really tiny resistor. Let's, let's choose a different one. All right, you get to watch in real time as I choose a resistor. Really, I'm just gonna choose the, uh, the size of it. 0201 is like, that's what you'd see on your motherboard. That's just way too small. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not subjecting anyone to that. This, I don't have the same problem with the LED, do I? Okay, good. 0603 is, um, Sixty thousandths of an inch by uh, thirty thousandths of an inch, right? And that's what was that one point six by oh eight? I don't know. I don't know how the conversions work in my head. I have to look it up. All right. So this is my new this is my new resistor. All right. So this is an O six O three package. Okay. And we're gonna have to assign it a footprint. So double click on the R one. Now all these. Properties here list reference value and here's footprint. Okay, now you can go and click on this these book symbols and then go to the footprint selector, right? Now in here, there are all sorts of libraries. It's just like the symbol library uh, selector, but these are for footprints and I'll show you what I mean. So let's go down and find where the LED surface mount. SMD means surface mount device, right? Okay, so we have 0603 metrics here. Okay, so here's an LED. It's got an 0603. Uh, okay, and the, all right, so everything that's actually gonna get written on your schematic, remember I was telling you about the layers uh, that if you go down to here and you look at a circuit board, you've got different layers. One of them is this white writing. That white writing, is symbolized with this sort of dingy green, um, sort of blue-green writing here, right? So this is gonna be white script on your circuit board, and so is this piece right here. That little piece is gonna tell you the polarity of your LED, okay? So I'm in the selector right now, and I can show the 3D footprint of it. So not only are there actual footprints in here, there's a 3D model of it. So I'm gonna just, so here's the 3D model of the LED. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's neat. All right, I think I can, yep, and I'll just go ahead and exit that, exit that view. Now double click on the part, and now the script will be in here. Okay, press okay, wonderful. Let's do the same thing for this LED. Go over D1, I want this to be a surface mount LED, and I will show you the part. It is uh, this guy right here, this little feller. Oh wait, I. Oh no, sorry, go back to the resistor. I chose, I put the LED where the resistor was supposed to be. So I guess we already chose, <laughs> we chose the LED. That cat me threw, that kitten threw me off. 
just came in here and let's go. Ahead. All right, so we've already chosen the LED. We've looked at it through the 3D viewer. I'm a big dunce. Uh, let's go ahead and look at R1. Let's go ahead and find a resistor. All right. Now, using the same method, I want you to go ahead and pause this video when I'm done speaking. Go ahead and find a footprint for this resistor. I want it to be an 0603. And hint, it's going to be in the R underscore SMD or something similar to that um, uh, library. Okay, go ahead and find me a, just pick any of the resistor 0603 packages and go. All right, you're back? Cool. Hover over the footprint selector. We are now going to go to the R resistor. Okay, so it's not R underscore SMD, but it's R this resistor underscore SMD. You can see the 0603 right here, and you just double click it. If you want to see what it looks like in a 3D model, you know, be entertained. There it is. And you can use the same controls, by the way. Middle click pans, middle wheel zooms in and out. It doesn't seem like it centers on whatever you're zooming in on, so you're going to have to just pan around. Uh, I don't know how to, whoop. Okay, if you, if you middle click, all right, and if you left click and drag around, you'll rotate it, very cool. And if you middle click on any specific spot in the screen, you will zoom in on that spot. So if I want to click here and then rotate around it, so there you go. You can get real intimate with your resistors there. Okay, so we've got an 0603, and notice there's also a metric. Okay, so 0603 is the English measurements, and 1608 is the metric. Probably what that means is that 60 thousandths of an inch by 30 thousandths of an inch, or 1.6 millimeters by 0.8 millimeters, if I were to make a guess. I could be wrong. Try, try punching into Google um, 60 thousandths of an inch to millimeters and just see what pops up. Okay, so that's our surface mount part of the circuit, okay? Now we're gonna pick uh, R2, and I want R2 to be a through-hole resistor, okay? Now I've already selected R2. R2 is a, bah, 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 this guy right here, okay? Now, for selecting this guy, I want it to lay flat, like flat, like a hot dog sitting on a, on a, plate, on a plate. I'm hungry, by the way, so you can tell from my analogies. It's a quarter watt. Uh, let me see what the dimension is, because I wanted you to go ahead and try doing this yourself. Okay, so it's a quarter watt, but it is a 2.3 millimeter by six millimeter uh, body resistor, okay? Go ahead and see if you can find it. I've not actually used a through-hole resistor before, so it could be a uh, it could be a little bit of a challenge. But go ahead and find me a resistor underscore th. Uh, I forget what the rest of it is through hole or something. Uh, it's th something. It might be tht. I forget. And go ahead and find a two point three millimeter by six millimeter part. Okay, go. All right, you're back. You may have not have paused the video at all. You get to see me in real time. I didn't d duck off to go get some coffee. It is THT, I was right. Sometimes I'm right. So that was a 2.3 by six, correct? Okie dokie, let's go find that a 2.3 by six. So I'm seeing, so I want this to lay flat, right? So I need a 2.3, yeah, I want a horizontal. These all look pretty beefy. These are huge. These are big boys. You can also look at the 3D model if you need a clue on what's going on. So this is a 3.6 by one point. This is a 3.6. All right, length is 3.6. The D, that is the diameter of the hole, that's gonna depend on the lead thickness. All right, now notice I sent you guys off under equipped. Uh, that sometimes happens. I just want you guys to get used to being a little bit under equipped and unsure of what's going, what to do because that helps. That's that's gonna be your career as an engineer. There's a little bit of that. So 2.3 millimeters by six millimeters. So six is a minimum. These, these leads can go out and stretch a little bit. So let's see what we can do. So six millimeter minimum. Um, this is 3.6, is it the length? Let me see. All right, so if you need to, if you need help figuring out what to do in these drawings, you can zoom in on it and just double click on one of these pins. Or sorry, let's see. Oh, it doesn't, okay, so you can't edit in here. All right, well just put your uh, mouse cursor over the center of the pin and you can see in the bottom of my screen here is these numbers that are changing. You can see that this is 7.62, which is 0.3 inches 
to the right. So both these holes are uh, 7.62 millimeters apart. So that's what this P uh, 7.62 is. 3.6 millimeters, let's find out what that is. Let's zoom in and I'm gonna go and put my mouse cursor over the top of this uh, silk screen here. And that is about three, that is gonna be about one millimeter, okay? So this thing looks like it's about one millimeter diameter. Da, 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 da. Not really loving that. 7.62 millimeters is plenty of is plenty of room because we need six millimeters and the diameter is 2.3 millimeters this one this guy might be it let's let's give it a 3d view and check it out okay that might work out let's give it a shot I think it'll do. All right, now I want this to lay horizontally, remember? So here we go. That's my guy. Now I've got another part, which is an LED. And this is a through hole LED. This goes through the board, right? Just like the resistor does. It's got a holes in the board, you gotta solder it in. And if you open up the data sheet for it, the data sheet gives you all sorts of useful information. In the, in the data sheet is a mechanical drawing. In here, you get to see all these different dimensions on here. It's very cool and scientific. But the main takeaway is that these, these uh, wires that are coming out of it, these leads are 2.54 millimeters apart. And the diameter of the top of it here appears to be, it says 3.7 by 5.1, okay. So it looks like five is the diameter we're gonna want. Now, it's obviously not perfectly round, but that's okay. Oh, by the way, if you double click on something and this pops up, it's just asking you to clarify your selection. So I'd want, I don't want the pin, I want the symbol itself. So I'm gonna click on that. Now I've selected the symbol, I'm gonna right click it and go to properties and then edit properties. That is the surefire way of getting where you need to go. Double clicking can be kind of tricky. Let's go ahead and find a footprint for this. Let's go to LED and then THT. All right, now what we want is a five millimeter diameter with holes that are 2.54 millimeters apart. So we have LED, we've got all these other LEDs, three millimeter diameter, da, 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 da. here we go, five millimeter diameter. And you'll notice that there's 1.27 Let's see, I think, yeah, these measurements don't match. These 1.27s, uh, that, yeah, that, that's not what I want. That's a horizontal. You don't want a horizontal one. Let's just go with the LED D5 millimeter, right? Okay, so let's use our mouse. We're gonna go over to the second hole. So remember, see how these blue crosshairs go over the first pin here? The second pin is so this, this first pin is gonna be at the zero, zero because that's where the axis is. So going over to the second pin, hovering your mouse over it, you're gonna get an approximate feel uh, for how far it is. And you see the X down below is 2.54 and the Y is zero. That means the second pin is directly at 2.54. And this is a five millimeter uh, can here. Let me confirm that. If I go down to the very bottom of this circle, I could see that uh, the Y is th about three and then double that, because you got three millimeters on top and three millimeters below, that's about six, which is a little bit bigger than five, which is fine. You, you want your outline to be a little bit bigger. This is just creating a keep out area so that you don't get parts hitting other parts. All right, also you notice that my LEDs, I got them switched. This uh, red one is the through hole. You can rename parts, so I'm gonna rename D2. D2 is my through hole guy, I'm gonna write red. And then on my other guy, who is the surface mount one, I'm gonna type green. My mistake. There we go. Make sure to save, hit Control S. You can also click right up here. If you have already saved, this will be ghosted out. If you have not saved, it will be uh, not ghosted. So let's say I put one K, uh, I don't know, 1.0 K, right? So you see it's not ghosted anymore. You click it and there it's done. I'm gonna type one K here. All right, very good. Make sure to save. 
All right, and uh, this guy right here, I need to assign a symbol to my connector. Now I've double clicked on it. I wanna click on symbol. So it's asking me to clarify my selection. I'm gonna right click and then go to properties and then edit properties. Now the footprint for this one is in the connector library. The connector library is up here. Now notice there's a ton of connectors. You're not gonna use most of them. Uh, these guys, I believe that actually the connector library, yeah, see how this library doesn't really have a lot in it. it seems a little half, half baked if you ask me. There's also a one that says connector pin. It doesn't have a lot in it either. What you want is connector 2.54. That means 2.54 millimeters from each other. 2.54 is a tenth of an inch. So you're going to see 2.54, you know, knocked around a lot. And I just want, uh, yeah, I just want this uh, connector to just have wires come directly out of the board. So I'm going to choose vertical, uh, two pin connector, and I want it to be uh, 2.54 apart. And I can confirm that it's 2.54 apart by noticing where the origin is, where these blue crosshairs cross, is on pin one. And then going down to pin two, I notice that it's 2.5 six, which is close enough. That's just because I'm not precise with my mouse, but it looks like it's about 2.54 apart. So that's perfect. Let's grab that guy. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. And click. Okay. Awesome. Now we've assigned now these, the nine volts here and the ground do not need footprints because they're just symbols that can, that virtually connect this wire over to the other wire. That's all it does. It just says, hey, you've got nine volts, you've got nine volts, you're connected. That way your uh, schematic doesn't look like a big bunch of spaghetti, okay? So now that we've assigned everything a footprint, we're gonna go to, and I'm pretty sure I assigned this guy one, right? Yeah, okay, that's right, I had to go search for that. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, net and we're gonna generate a net list, okay? We've generated a net list. We're gonna just do this in PCB new. You can also do this in these other options, but you don't need to. If you're just using KiCad, just use PCB new. This net list is gonna be a list of all of the uh, symbols and what they're connected to, okay? We've just generated it, all right? And we're gonna use that to create a circuit board. Click on the uh, circuit board symbol up here, run PCB new to layout, print in circuit board, and there we are. We have a blank board here. There's nothing here. What we have to do is we have to load from the schematic, update PCB from schematic. What you're doing is you're saying, hey, bring all those footprints and those connections and then send them to me so I can lay them out and do a circuit board. All right? Now, we didn't, we didn't miss any parts. If you did miss a part, you would get a warning or an error, okay? And you've noticed it, it's added D1 and it's added the footprints, added all these footprints. It's awesome. Okay, update the PCB. Very good. Now it's attached every part from your schematic onto your cursor here. It's a little chaotic. Feel free to zoom in a few times, bop, 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 and then just left click and place them there. All right, very cool. Now I've clicked somewhere off in space to get me out of a certain mode. And you can just start picking these parts up. And if you right click on the part, you can see that there's all these different options. There's move, so you can hit M, and you're now you're moving it. You notice there was also an R in there so I can rotate it. I want to rotate this so the writing is the right orientation. There's no other reason. Now I can hover over this and just hit M. Oh, whoops. Make sure to click off the part. So if the part is highlighted, that means you still have it selected. You got to click off the part. Now another uh, got you is that if you don't hit the right part, you might move some text. So you have to put your mouse over top of the electrical connection itself. All right. So let's do green right there. I'm gonna move this connector over here. Move you over, yeah, let's leave you like that. Now, when you're moving these things around, there's a lot of technique to it, which I'm not gonna go over in this video because there's just a lot. Uh, you want to have these little lines, these little spaghetti wires cross as n little as possible. There we go. I'm just gonna put you right there. Now notice how the surface mount parts are also way smaller. Yeah, let's make everything, let's make all the text face the same way. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. There's gonna be a lot of trying to figure out what's going on here. Okay, this looks good. So notice how the little spaghetti wire from J1 is going to the top pin on R1 and the bottom pin on R1 is going down to the LED. That's what you want. Because what I wanna do here now let's go ahead and make everything kind of compact. 
So you can also just select the item and then just click and drag it wherever, and that'll do the same thing, but I like to, to move uh, a different way. I think I can actually grab this. Yeah, let's grab you, and we're gonna rotate you a couple times. All right, there we go. So that way they're not crossing. Okay, that'll do now. Now notice the text is on top of each other. We can move the text individually as well. Uh, let's go ahead and do that, actually. So hover your mouse over top of some text, make sure you don't have anything selected, and just hit the M to move it, and you can rotate it while you're moving it. Now, if your grid is a little sticky, what you wanna do is go up to your grid and just change it a little bit. So maybe 10 mils. So see how 10 mils, 10, that's 10 thousandths of an inch. It's also 0.254. Now you got a little bit more control. See how much more fluid that is? How much, uh, how less sticky that is? Let's go ahead and select this K at 1K. Now I like to put the name of the part above its value. It just reads better, I find. Okay, clarify selection. So it's asking me which one. So if you ever click on an item and there's multiple things on top of each other, it's gonna ask you to clarify the selection. I wanna select the value, 1K, and now I wanna click M and now move it. And now this little blue line here is telling you which part it belongs to. If you've got all these letters in here, it can turn into a bit of an alphabet soup. And you're going to really appreciate having something tell you uh, what you know bundle of letters belongs to what part. Because it's going to get a little chaotic. Okay, we got D2 now. And I'm going to select this red. Now notice how the D2 and the red are different colors. That means they're on different layers and we don't really want that, right? We want these to be on the same layer. Uh, this right now is on the, I think it's under the fab layer, but we can change its layer. So we wanna make this red show up on the circuit board. If I select it, which it's selected now, and then click on, here we go front silk screen let's see or is that not it this might take a minute okay yeah so you, once you've selected the text you can right click and go to properties and then select which layer it's going to go on so right now it's on the front fab layer i want to put on the front silk screen layer silk screen is where all the writing is go ahead and do the same thing for uh the 1k if you double click on it it'll do the same thing you don't have to right click and hit properties you can just go to front silk screen and that is, there we go, I was kind of temporarily blind there for a second. Go ahead and do that with all these. Oh, see, so here we go. I'm gonna move this, oh, I'm gonna move this D1. I'm gonna put it above the part, and I'm gonna take this green, I'm gonna put it below, okay? And I'm gonna leave that green in, in, the, in the fab layer, and I'm gonna show you what happens. Okay? Now we've got a circuit, everything looks pretty good. Little wires are going where they need to. Everything looks really nice and pretty. Uh, this guy right here is kind of crossing a little bit, but I think it's gonna be okay. Um, see how these, these little wires here cross? We can, we can work with that. I'm gonna go ahead and click the uh, route tracks button. So now I've got a little, the little pencils on my cursor now, and I'm routing tracks. And what you wanna do is you wanna go to the pin that you wanna start with mm. and grab it. And now you're laying out a circuit board. Take it over to the next pin. Now notice how it bends and moves. It only moves at 45 degree angles, okay? That's how, that's how you get those nice angles on a circuit board. And you can just take it from pin to pin. Just keep on going. You can go and meander a little bit. You can have a little, have a little sew yarn if you want. See, I'm just gonna make it do a little curly action. Go ahead and play with it and get used to it. Now, notice how if I have an angle here, it only goes up one leg of, of the uh, shape that I'm making at a time. So see here, it's only the vertical portions about to get highlighted, boom. So I've only put the vertical portion. This thing will plan two, two bits ahead. There we go. So I've taken a little bit of a sew yarn, that's okay. The electrons will find their way. Electrons are pretty, they're pretty motivated. You put a little voltage behind them and they'll go. All right, we're gonna go over to the other side here. Now, notice that this ground, this GND, the rightmost pin of D1, has two connections. It wants to go over to this ground. So we're going to go ahead and make it happy. We're going to come right out the bottom. I like to come out of the uh, pins here at a, at a 90 degree angle. So just directly right on out. 
It just it just strikes me better. Now notice if I click on the wire itself, I just start drawing, and that's no good. You don't want to do that. So you're gonna to want to just delete all of that. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel. And I'm gonna exit that mode and then hit delete. I just hit the delete key to make that happen. You want to go from pin to pin whenever possible. All right, that was just a nice straight shot. All right, this circuit board is almost completely done. It could use just a few more things. First thing you want to do, you want to put your name on it. You should be proud of the work you do. I'm Alex. I am the, uh, the Alex Manasseh. And you might want to put the date. You might want to say, was it October 11th? I always struggle with my versa. I, I flip my arm as, at the same time I'm clicking the button and then it cancels out because I'm a silly person. Uh, and this is going to be called a uh, Rev A. Some people like to start with Rev Dash and that's okay. We're going to start with Rev A. That means this is the first revision, revision A of this board, okay? And we want to put it on the front copper, no. So all these different layers have different meanings. I'm going to go over those another time, but we want to put this on the silk screen. We want all, all this to be in writing. And you have all these widths and heights and thicknesses of the lines and everything, and you can change it to italics and all sorts of all sorts of what have you. We don't have to mess with that today, but we are going to just put this, I don't know, some someplace prominent. Uh, now notice it's center aligned. I don't really like that. I would like to change it and make it justified to the left. There we go. There we go. That's nice. Now notice how the, the letters are, are uh, highlighted a bit. That means I'm still in the selection mode. If I hit M, I will start moving it. Wonderful. See how that? See how I can keep the distance now, but also maintain the shape. You can see you can almost see the rectangle I'm making out of this board. Okay. Now keep an eye on this green. I have not put it on the silk screen. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't. The only thing we need to do with this board now, the only thing we need to do with this board now is give it an outline. So we're going to go ahead and uh, add a uh, graphic line and we're going to do it on the edge cuts layer. So on the right here where it says layer, select edge cuts so there's a little blue uh, triangle next to it. Add graphic lines and we're just going to go and you can just draw them wherever you like. Uh, down at the bottom you can see the DX and DY. I like to keep nice right angles. In fact, I, I definitely think you should keep a nice right angle whenever you're making edge cuts. So you're you should only have a, a D in one direction there. So you see how my DY is zero, and my DX is uh, 20, 25.4. 25.4 is exactly one inch, so that's very good. I'm gonna middle click to pan upwards, and I'm gonna keep an eye on that DX, because I want the DX to be zero now, and the DY is, now notice how going up is negative. It's just a, it's just a system, it's just the way they do things. Now my DX needs to be, now that just happened so that I was the, at the right height. That doesn't necessarily happen. But now you see this little circle? That means I'm closing the board. I've closed the polygon. So now I have a complete uh, polygon there. All right, now hit the Save button. Go ahead and save. You worked hard on this. Go up to View and go to 3D Viewer. Now let's see what we've got here. Oh, isn't that cool? Pan around with your middle click button, zoom in with your middle, uh, your mouse wheel button, and then rotate with your left button, okay? Now see, that's your circuit board. The Alex Manaxa, October 11th, 2020, Rev A. We've got our resistor, we've got our other resistor, we've got our two LEDs. You can also see the size difference between through hole and surface mount. Surface mount is harder to solder, but it is way smaller and usually a lot cheaper, okay? If you want to see a, uh, a fancy rendering, you can hit over here and it'll do a render. Hopefully you have a good uh, graphics card to do it. All this really does is give everything a little bit more texture. You can sort of see with the resistor, it's got a weird texture. I mean, it kind of looks like it's made out of wood. <laughs> it looks like a wooden resistor. That's very silly. Back in my day, we made resistors out of wood. Uh, so resistors are actually made with a, uh, there's a couple of different ways of making resistors. They have the actual metal elements inside and then it's a ceramic that I think gets baked over it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and exit out of that. That's really cool. And that's your circuit board. If you want to have this board made, you would go over to, uh, I think it's File, and then Plot. And you're going to see all these layers. So all those layers that you just uh, made, 
you can have the uh, are going to get printed out as a different file, and you can have a plot format be a Gerber. That's the one you want. That's what almost all board houses will use. If you leave output directory blank, it'll just plop it all out in the same directory. Uh, da, 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 place footprint res and plot. Oh, I didn't point out in that 3D view. Also, another way to get the 3D view is if you're on this PCB new, just hit Alt and then three and you'll go into it. Notice how D1 does not have a silk screen there to tell you that it's a green LED. Let's go ahead and fix that now. We're just gonna go down and change the layer to F silk screen, F silk S. Now we're gonna go ahead and view it. Huh. And now that we've changed it, we're gonna to need to update our silk screen. Or sorry, we're gonna to need to update our uh, layer. So we're just gonna go back to plot and we're gonna just plot it again. There we go. The other thing that KiCad offers is an ability to view Gerber files. So you can review what you're about to send out. If you just select all these different, well, let's just open up the Gerber viewer and then we'll load them in. Okay, so here's your Gerber viewer. There we go, we've launched. And I wanna open Gerber files. So file open, and I'm gonna just gonna choose all these Gerber files, all those. and. Uh, just all the GBR files. There we go. And there it is. You can see layer by layer what this circuit board is made of. This copper layer in the front, that's the actual copper. You can uh, make it go away uh, by clicking the button here to enable or disable it. Uh, you also have the uh, mask, which is the back solder mask. I don't really care about anything that's on the back. Oh, okay, so this is back copper, so B, C, U, so back, and then copper, this is the chemical symbol, C, U. Then there's the back paste, I don't care about that. There's the back silk screen, don't care about that. Uh, edge cuts are right here, and you can actually learn about the layers layer by layer here by doing this. So here's the front copper. So all the, all the, co all the front copper is now going away. You can learn about what the solder mask is. The solder mask is only on the spots where you wanna have solder, right? And, it, and it's a negative, which means that there's actually gonna be solder mask all over this, except in the spots that are listed here. So they're not gonna put that green enamel material anywhere, but they're gonna put it everywhere except for these spots where it's listed. All right, and then you got your solder paste. We're not using solder paste in this design. And then you got your front silk screen, and here's what it looks like when you take the silk screen away, okay? These are files that you'd go and send to a board house to get this circuit board made. Uh, it's pretty easy. It's pretty streamlined. You might have to tell them which layers each of these parts are. You might have to like write down front copper and all that stuff. Uh, not everyone's a native English speaker, so please be sensitive to everyone that you work with. Uh, I'm going to pop over here into headshot mode. Yeah, that's the long and short of it. So I've been going out for less than an hour and we've made a circuit board and I've told you everything about it. Uh, there's no mystery there. I've told you how to do all the buttonology. Uh, let's review. So I've done the uh, how do you, how do you, where do you get KiCad? Uh, how do you start KiCad and create a project? How do you create a schematic? How do you assign footprints to the schematic? How do you use the footprints and the schematic to generate a net list? How do you use the net list to start a circuit board? How do you position and move things around on the circuit board? How do you route the circuit board? How do you change layers on objects in the circuit board? How do you do a 3D view? And then how do you print your Gerber files so that you can send them to get your circuit board made? I think that kind of covers all of it. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I uh, appreciate you guys paying attention for a full hour. And I look forward to making more boards with you guys in the future. And uh, <clears throat> please tune in to me making a marachetti. It's going to be a really awesome project where I use persistence of vision to turn a machete into an American flag. So every time I swing it, I have a nice light trail of uh, America behind me. And you can change the flag to whatever you want. I'm using RGBW LED. So that's red... Uh, I almost said red, gold, red, green, blue, and white LED lights. So tune into that. It's really cool. Subscribe if you want to learn more about engineering and you want to hear me rambling on because I do a thinking out loud segment, which is just me vlogging for like five to 20 minutes a day. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. All right. You have a good one. Bye. Bye.